podcaster. Uh, super fun show tonight. We, of course, it's a Tuesday, got your obscure celebrity connections, which never fails. We also got amazing calls from people talking about how far they had fallen. Plus, we had people dobbing in their nans, which was very illegal, uh, but very, very funny. Enjoy. Can you feel the tension in the air right now? Live across Australia. I know I can. This is Late Drive. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. With Ben, Liam and Bell. Fresh and juicy, ready for the picking on Nova. And we can go all night, so if you want me. <laughs> yes! Good evening, Australia. It is Late Drive. I like the new intro. Yeah. Got a bluish hue to them. You're going to fill this show down in your plums. <laughs> Do we want that? Yeah, you want okay. that. That's something you want, yeah. for sure. All right. <laughs> uh, something that you don't want is what happened to Olivia Rodrigo in the last uh, show uh, in Melbourne for her tour. She fell down the stage. <laughs> Sometimes there's just a hole in the stage. There's a big hole on the stage. Uh, she's very cool about it. Yeah. She seems like a sweet person. She, she, you know, she could have really like stuffed herself up on that. She seems pretty tough because it, even though it doesn't sound like a bad fall, I reckon she definitely would have damaged her ribs. Yeah, like when Post Malone went down last year and it was like he'd been shot. Yeah. He was sort of like gro- groaning around on the stage. Yeah, whereas bit. Olivia, she made it look hot still. Like she was still mm. falling and she got up. She's like, yep, damn, I'm fine. Amazing. Made it look cool. Uh, she probably fell about five feet. Um, so tonight what we want to do on 13, 24, 10 is how far did you fall? Let's see how far you fell. Let's see how far you fell. <laughs> five feet is where Olivia Rodrigo fell. So I think it needs to be like more than that to be impressive. Yeah, the higher you fell, the funnier, the better. And yeah, that you're yeah. okay. Obviously, it's it's funny to a certain point. Then it gets quite serious. Then it gets quite sad. Yep. Um, but we do have a call here from Isabel in Melbourne. How far did you fall? Hi, I was climbing a tree when I was younger, and I tripped and fell out of the tree and landed on the stick, oh. and it was really hard. <laughs> uh, wait, did the stick go through anything, or it just sort of? It went through my back. I um, ended up getting eight stitches, and now I've got a little love heart scar on my back. Are you able to give us a distance on the fall, like roughly? Um, probably about a story and a half, I reckon. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to need that in feet. That's the metric we've chosen tonight. <laughs> it would be about 10 feet, I guess, maybe. 10 feet? Yeah, let's yeah. go 10 feet. Isabel, thank you very much. You know what? Because you're our first caller tonight, we're going to give you a prize. Uh, we're going to give you a Nutribullet flip. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. No worries at all. Nutribullet, the number one personal blender brand in the world. 13, 24, 10. How far did you fall? Marie in Melbourne. This was your dad. Oh, that's not good. How far did he fall? <laughs> Seven and a half metres backwards onto a concrete slab. Oh, oh. gee whiz. <laughs> and once again, we're going to need that in feet, Marie. It's just metric we've chosen <laughs> no, tonight. No, no. We are fine with metres. Marie, how did it happen? So he was on a building site and they were just finishing off the job doing all the fit outs and someone had missed one nail on a noggin, which is part of your framework. Mm -hmm. He went to lean on that with his foot and fell straight down and hit a window frame on the way down, which they, in hindsight, said saved his life because it stopped the trajectory just a little. Mm. And yeah, backwards, knocked himself out, cracked his sacrum bone, broke all his ribs and was black for months with bruising. Rough. Mm. And for anyone playing along at home, 24 feet, so that's a lot. Very good. 13, 24, 10, how far did you fall? Andrew, how far was it? Uh, it was about seven metres. Sorry, I'm trying to pull over so I can ask. Yeah, about seven metres off the side of a grain silo, but thankfully I uh, hit another silo on the way down and that broke most of my fall. Yeah, similar to the last caller. Man, yeah, I mean, that's that's 20 feet right there. Were you climbing up the silo to check how much grain was in the top of it? What were you doing? Uh, I was actually climbing up to close the lid because we just finished filling it. Uh, yeah, I know people because that—that's the thing that can happen as well. People like fall into in. silos, and that's like the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jess joins us now. How far did you fall? I fell through my next door neighbor's skylight. So what, ten, eleven feet, single story house. Straight okay. Skylight. So- straight onto the bathroom floor. Missed the bathtub by about. 10 centimetres. Oh, God. And was was it, you know, how did you manage that? Were you, were you snooping around yeah, the were house? Yeah, you breaking so you, in? Yeah. <laughs> Just 
silly kids. My brother and I were about seven and nine, just, you know, hanging out on the weekend on the neighbor's roof. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you do. Just in the wrong place and then went down like a, a ton of bricks. Yeah, because yeah, my neighbours sometimes get annoyed when I like kick the ball over the fence. But I mean, <laughs> I, I can imagine that you and your brother just sort of climbing around. Is that a, you got big possums here? No, that's just the, the little shit kids from next door. <laughs> really annoying, actually. Uh, Jessica, thank you very much. 13 24 10. That's our number. If you have got a story, we'd love to hear it. Mark in Melbourne, eight metres is about where we're at at the moment. Can you beat that? How far did you fall? I fell over nine metres into a river. Oh, okay. The river, I guess, maybe softens it a bit. What happened? I went out one night, had quite a few lemonades. Uh, Nature called, so I thought, well, I'll add to the water stream and I leaned a bit too far and, yeah, over I went. (laughs) Splash into the drink. Yeah, right. You're very chill about the whole thing, Mark. I'd imagine, you know, after a few lemonades as well, the body's relaxed. Might have also helped as well. Was there anybody around to try and help you, Mark? Probably a little bit too relaxed, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good stuff, Mark. <laughs> I think he's had a few lemonades tonight. <laughs> uh, Paige, in Melbourne, you can beat nine metres. It was your dad. How far did he fall? He fell 27 metres. <gasps> Oh, what? Is your dad okay? He is. He is okay. He's okay now. Um, but yes, last year he did fall 27 metres down a cliff uh, while he was my mountain bike riding with a group um, down in my area. Um, no one was around him. No one realised he had fallen off the trail until they did a, a head check and then they went back and found him halfway down the cliff, paralysed, um, like barely speaking, so they called in the paramedics, and um, he was uh, he was airlifted up and then taken to the the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Wow! She are, yeah. we, are we talking like? Because you say twenty seven meters, was it like a very very steep hill, or is it like yeah, an actual cliff? Yeah. No, it's like pretty. It, it's like a really long hill going down, but it is it is fairly steep. It's down in the gorge. Um, I'm sure if anyone who's gone there knows it's it's very hilly there. Um, but yeah, he, he fell down and did some pretty bad damage to his spine, um, had nerve damage for months, couldn't touch his hands. Like if you touched him, it felt like he, he told me that it felt like you were just constantly slicing his hands open with like, uh, like a knife. Uh. Um, so yeah, he had, he, um, he had to get his nose with a compound fracture. So his bone was sticking out of his nose. He had a laceration in his. Uh, forehead, which was so deep, um, it was almost like you could see his brain. Um, and then his lip was sliced in half as well. So well, he had to Paige, undergo a pretty big surgery. That does sound quite severe. Would you it like was to, pretty bad. Would you like to go to the movies? I've got m- movie tickets. I would love to go to the movies. Well, right. I would let my parents go to the movies because they love it. Yeah, but he, and he yeah. had that fall after all. I mean, you're just recounting the whole thing. Yeah. All right, Paige, yeah. I'm going to well, give you two tickets to the movies for Saturday night in cinemas October 31. Oh, thank you so much. No worries. Have a great night. You like that feeling in your ear holes? That's the Ben Lamb and Bell podcast. One buster man on your radio. Yeah, this game's becoming a real David versus Goliath. Liam is Goliath and Brianna is going to be David tonight. How you doing, Brianna? I'm good. How are you? Yes, very good. Now, the rules of the game are simple. I play a song and you have to tell me the name of the song and the artist just from hearing the very first bar of it. You buzz in with your name and if you can beat Liam, you're walking away with a bar of gold. All right, let's see how we go. <laughs> how are your slingshot skills, Brianna? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling pretty nervous, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we uh, test our buzzers? Brianna, you go first. Brianna. Yep, not bad, Liam. Bam! You go. Oh, see, oh, that's how quick oh, I am, Brianna. Oh, say Liam. Ah, I'm quick. You I'm just quick. yell. If you slow it down, it would say Liam. Yeah, and no. that, that would be a win. All oh, right. Are you on here? <laughs> I am going to give it a theme, as I always do, because Olivia Rodrigo is in the country at the moment playing shows. She's 21. The theme is artists who have been 21. Okay. These okay. themes are getting lazier and lazier. <laughs> so anyone that's... Anyone 21. that's been 21. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, here we go. Song number one. Liam, that's just a Bieber baby. He's been 21, so it all checks out. <laughs> all right, that is a point to the one bar star, man. Liam, that is Charlie XX Apple. Boom! Oh my God. She was 21. <laughs> she has been 21, I checked. Come on, Brianna. All right, here we go. Next song. Liam. John Farnham, you're the voice. He's clean sweep, John. <laughs> we ain't playing today! <laughs> we ain't playing today! Brianna, uh, thank you very much for playing. You have a great night. You too, thanks, Pete. See ya. And once again, Goliath kicks David <laughs> to the ground. Okay. If you think you can take on the one bar star, man, we need worthy challenges. 13 24 10 is our number. Give us a buzz and you can play next Tuesday night. If you put on our podcast as you go to sleep, this one's for you. Ah! Obscure celebrity connections. Come on and give us a call. Everyone's got one. 13 24 10. Is your mechanic's nephew married to Bindi Irwin? Or. Maybe you went to school with a girl whose stepdad lived on the same street as Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit. <laughs> that would be amazing. We do have Nutri Bullets up for grabs to our favourite caller tonight. Uh, 13 24 10 is the number. Kicking us off is Sean in Adelaide. Good evening. What's your obscure celebrity connection? So, my great grandfather's brother's great grandson is Grant Denyer. Whoa! <laughs> the little man with a big heart. He is, definitely. <laughs> I love how you went all the way up the chain yeah. and then back down the chain. <laughs> yeah, because then what does that make him to you? Is there any connection there? No, because it's such a distant relative. There's not a connection there. But it's in, I've got a whole family history on my mother's side that dates back to like the 1700s. And it's, it's, it's in a book. And yeah, he's, he's, he's a distant, distant relative. Wow. <laughs> Pretty bloody cool. Very cool. <laughs> Especially when you're just sitting there, you know, watching a game show going, <laughs> you see him? Yep, that's a distant cousin of mine. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Tiff, what about you? What's your obscure celebrity connection? So my best friend was engaged to Ruby Rose oh. back in the day. I think she was 21. It was at her 21st birthday that Ruby was there and I had my little baby and she held my newborn daughter who was like a couple of weeks old. And that's my daughter's claim to fame. She shows that photo to all of her friends. She's like, I know Ruby Rose. I'm like, mate, you don't know her. (laughs) Still pretty cool. Yeah. 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 She was in John Wick 3. I think it was 2, wasn't it? No, you're right. I'm getting my John Wick wires crossed. (laughs) Oh, uh, Orange is the New Black. Yeah. And John Wick 2. Steve in Melbourne. What's yours? When I was young, we used to live across the road from uh, Fury from the original, original Gladiators, her parents. (laughs) <laughs> so Fury's made, parents' house. Yeah, so Fury and Titan occasionally, they were a couple, um, would be there. So used to go across there and see them, and uh, it's the biggest suit I've ever seen. <laughs> was, his, was his name Titan, did you say? Yeah, so Fury and Titan were a couple, I think, at the time, and yeah, uh, yeah right. so they pulled them together. Yeah. <laughs> you would have been pretty popular at school. Hey, guys, come over to my house. Fury and Titan might be over. <laughs> come over for a barbecue if you can watch them over the fence. <laughs> Obscure celebrity connections. Come on and give us a call. Susie in Melbourne, what's your obscure celebrity connection? I went to school with Kate Blanchett. Oh, oh did you go to MLC? I did, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nah, same Susie. Wow, <laughs> Susie. Same school as Belle. You can say, next time you call, I went to the same school as Belle Jackson uh, from uh, Nova's <laughs> Late Drive program. That's not a thing to laugh at, Susie. Come on. Well, I think Belle might have been a few years uh, later than me. Yeah, so, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Susie, in, in my era, it was, wow, she went here once upon a time, but you, you've yeah. got the connection. Yeah, yeah I she actually... was a year ahead and she was always the lead role. She was drama captain and she was, look, she was amazing back then as she is now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you would assume so. If you're like, yeah, she's a little drop kick in school, <laughs> then she just sort of worked that out. <laughs> uh, Aggie, uh, what's yours? Uh, hi, guys. So I used to be an Uber driver for some probably five years or so. So I drove a few celebrities. I drove George Colombaris before <laughs> the whole cooking the books. 
George Galambaras. Uh, what? what yep, did he a... give you a five star? Did he, did he lift uh, the card up? I think so. It, you can't tell who's giving you what, but right. he was mm. a very much a control freak in the car. Uh, miss, can you go left here? Can you go right oh, here? I'm thinking, really? George, <laughs> I've got a GPS and I've been doing this for a while. But I didn't say anything, just politely drove him and took his directions. And at the end, when I'm dropping him off at his mansion in Turak, he goes... Oh, I probably should have just let you do your job, shouldn't I? Aww. So at least he acknowledged it. You wouldn't get that kind of crap off of Matt Preston now, would you? <laughs> hey, Aggie, you said you've driven a couple of celebrities. Any other ones? Yeah, I drove Arj Barker. Um, yeah, so I had a chat to him. I said, hang on, because he booked it under RJ and he was all incognito. As soon as yeah. he got on the phone, I recognised his voice because I've seen him multiple times. So I said, oh, are you Arj Barker? And he goes, sometimes. Yeah. And that's where the banter started, so we had a good chat, had a laugh. Yeah, um, well, Aggie, it's probably because you had that crying baby in the front seat, and we all know how he feels about them. <laughs> oh. Aggie, thank you very much. Lee in Sydney, what's your obscure celebrity connection? Well, it's, a, it's an interesting one. My mum swears she tells the story when she was a young girl in China. Her, um, my grandmother took her to the family temple, and there's a family tree where we are directly related to Genghis Khan, one of his seven sons. Whoa. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from that, Lee, but didn't <laughs> Genghis Khan famously have it off with a lot of people? And yeah, well, he's, he like, seven, related to, like, 30% of the population? Yeah, he had seven official sons. One of them, his name is Mushek. And that's our family name. Well, it's my it's my mum's family name all the way back down to one of Genghis Khan's seven sons. So yeah, they they were um, into conquering more than just land. The old <laughs> Khan family. But... It's conquering ass for sure. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. That bit was baby Gronk approved. Oi, stop gooning. The next bit's about to start. I don't like speaking ill of the dead, Ben and Bell, but I've got some very Juicy Goss about Queen Elizabeth Regina. Her royal aide, who's an Australian woman actually, has come out and said, look, she was a great boss, a lovely woman, uh, but she has revealed Her Majesty's naughty habit. Ooh. Now, I know what you're thinking. You know, there's been rumours for years that she was a smoker, perhaps. Didn't mind a lung blaster. But that's not it. Apparently, the Queen was a hoon driver. She used to give it heaps around Balmoral. Strap in, Philip! We're late for cucumber sandwiches! They used to have to whisk the corgis off the fields because she was just tearing up That's not the true. gravel. She, was, she drove fast. She loved driving no. fast, apparently. Well, hang on. Are we talking like when she was 30? Like, she's not doing that when she's 90. She is. And we don't, let's not get into Phillips driving because we all know what happened uh, there. Yeah, they are yeah. above the law. Yeah. So she went as fast as she wanted to go. True. They could just shut down the whole main street and just go, yeah, let rip. I <laughs> bet there is footage somewhere of the Queen with a Nissan Skyline with some Macca's trays around the back. Just do it. <laughs> Just absolutely. Ball <laughs> take the win. <laughs> uh, all right, 13, 24, 10. Why don't we do this? Dob in your nan, or any grandparent for that matter. It doesn't actually matter. But if you've got a bit of a naughty grandparent and you want to dob them in, 13, mm-hmm. 24, 10. Uh, Tiff in Brizzy, 13, 24, 10. You're actually dobbing in your granddad. What's he done? Uh, well, when he was a bit, well, a good while younger, um, he was at a work party, brought my nan along, had one too much to drink, much, much more and was driving from one side of the road to the other and back and knocked a um, street sign off before he got home, and my grandmother has never recovered fully from, so from the uh, terror. Uh, so hang on. He was not only hoon driving like the, the queen, but he was also drunk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, that's not, not, not like it's not laugh drink driving. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm loving at the fact that. Do you think Tiff's drink driving is funny, Bill? No, just okay. you know, Tiff's sorry, called Tiffany. up and no, we just <laughs> sorry, it's, it's probably it's serious. It's a dark family secret that you've been holding on to, and I love that you've called to share. But um, yes, obviously, we don't encourage that whatsoever. Yeah, even though Bill does think it's really funny. Tiffany, <sighs> um, thank you very much for calling because you're our first caller for this one. I'm going to give you a fifty dollar GYG voucher. Oh, thank you so much. 
No worries at all. We've got plenty more vouchers to give away. 13, 24, 10. That's our number. If you want to dob in your nan or any grandparent, we'd love to hear about it. I should dob in my nan, Margaret. Um, she's also a bit of a hoon driver. Um, I don't have any <laughs> memories of this. I was always quite young, but my older sister tells me that um, she would often drive on the wrong side of the road with us kids in the car. Um, and when you would tell her, Nana, you're on the wrong side of the road, she'd say, don't you tell me how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> was your uh, Nana an African-American woman? <laughs> no, no, she's that... Scottish. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Because oh, your, Scottish, Scottish. your Scottish accent sounds like an African-American woman. <laughs> also, I never realised we our Nanas have the same name. Margaret. Yeah, I got a Nana, Margaret. Um, the other thing that she would do whilst being in the car as well is she was a big smoker, my Nana. <laughs> Um, and I was, I was a baby, my brother was four, uh, and my sister was nine, and we weren't allowed to wind the windows down whilst she was Well, smoking. Nan liked the hot boxes. She did. And, you know, you kids were too young to realise that they weren't <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> uh, Hayden joins us now. You want to dob in your nan for what? Yeah, so she's going to hate me bringing this up, but... A few years ago, oh, years ago when she was about 72, she caused a car accident. Oh, what did she do? Yeah, so she decided to stop suddenly to let these people cross at a, I think it's called an island, like a non-zebra crossing. Yep. Four cars back, going too quick as well. Slams on the brake, shoots out from the cure of traffic, bounces off a shop and into a tree. Oh, Nana. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. So it's quite entertaining. Everyone okay though, Hayden? Yeah, everyone, I think we're okay. We ended up yeah. driving off. I was like little. I'm like, oh, did you see that? And she goes, no, 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 turn around. We're going to keep driving. <laughs> I think your nana may have caused the crime there, Hayden. Yeah, that seems a little bit like a hate and run. <gasps> that, um, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> that's really awful. Let's move. Let's move. Don't tell anyone about this ever. Never call a radio station about this. <laughs> this is a crime. Thanks, Hayden. Uh, <laughs> Haley joins us now in Melbourne. You want to dob in your nan? Yes, hi. I think it's time to dob in my uh, Nana Barbara now that she's passed on, bless her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, she actually, uh, in her 70s and 80s, she was quite the player. Uh, she had multiple boyfriends and she even stole somebody's husband from the local cards community. Oh, oh Barbara. Barbara. Okay. She didn't <laughs> yeah. mind being a bit of side crumper, eh? <laughs> no. And uh, she actually ended up making quite a fortune because quite a few of them passed while they were with her. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> gold digger. Oh, I love her. I love her. <laughs> was there a, she was a beautiful lady? A <sighs> grandpa on the scene or? Uh, so, funny story, there was a grandpa on the scene. While she, whilst she was with my grandpa, mm. she actually uh, got a new boyfriend. His name was Keith. Mm. And she had them living in the same house together, and she nursed them both until they passed away. Wow. What did this woman have? I mean, <laughs> gee whiz, she sounds like uh, she's got men wrapped around her finger. Kim, you want to dob in your nan? Hello. Yes, I do want to dub in my nan. Can you guys hear me? I'm currently driving. Say again, Kim. <laughs> so no, I'm just, my yeah. nan, uh, when... <laughs> You good, Kim? Nan no, no. Stop, um... Can you hear me? No, yeah, no. Go now, Kim. You're all good. Yeah, she went to the uh, shopping plaza and stole something, and when the lady tried to check her bag, she punched her in the face. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yeah. yeah, she would have still had a bit of strength in her, the old girl. <laughs> she assaulted someone uh, after they caught her red-handed stealing. Yeah. She sounds like a lovely woman. <laughs> Kim, thank you very much. I'm glad we pushed through. Rochelle in Sydney, you want to dob in your yes, naughty nan? I sure do. She's an 87-year-old nana, and we took her to a strip show, and we got her pulled up on stage, and she was cheering and smacking the stripper's butt. She Hell was having yeah. a good old time. Wow. <laughs> She'd had her Swiss multivitamins that morning. The she osteoporosis did. had held off and she was getting involved. She was. She's a naughty nana. Yeah. <laughs> how was the, how did the heart go? I mean, I'd imagine it was sort of, you know, I don't I hope she didn't have a pacemaker or anything. It sort of would have been oh, racing. It was. It was. I think she was a bit shaky and out of breath, or maybe she was just like, you know, a bit turned on. <laughs> yeah. And Liam, you'd normally know at the strip club, it's probably taboo to, to smack anybody on the bottom, right? All right, we are not doing this. I, be, I know that was, a, that was an ongoing joke last week that I go to strip clubs. I don't. 
My wife actually asked me about it the other day. <laughs> there was a post on the Ben Liam and Bell Alpha Squad, um, which is, you can join that actually. It's a secret Facebook page we have. And um, someone um, said, hey, Liam, I'm going to Melbourne soon. What are the best strip clubs to go to? And she was like, what's all this about? And I'm like, oh, like I told this story about how I went to a strip club once when I was 18 and someone told that story at my 21st. And then Ben and Bell are peddling it like I'm, like I'm you know, going the more there, you talk, with... the more guilty yeah, I know, you I get it. I get it. <laughs> For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.